Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Our final presentation of today is David Duncan, who will be presenting on building a high-performance remote desktop with CentOS 8 Stream on Amazon EC2. Thank you, David, and take it away. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, this is um, uh, some of the work that I've been doing here recently with uh, CentOS 8 Stream and some of uh, and and other products, but um, uh, just a personal introduction. I'm a partner solutions architect at Amazon, and I work uh, specifically with the operating system platform partners. And majority of my work is done with Red Hat. But I've been uh, hanging around the uh, the CentOS and Fedora communities for um, more than a decade. I'll just say that and. Um, uh, I put a picture here of my um, my Whippet, the Tick, uh, who is one of my favorite favorite um, hobbies, is doing dog training and hanging out with my dogs. Uh, but recently, I've gotten pretty big into ham radio. So if any of you guys are on the air and you want to talk uh, talk um, uh, open source uh, software to find radio, I'm always up for it. So what we're going to do is uh, review. Um, what this uh, image builder does and what how what the goals that I put together are in the build process. Um, then we'll build a CentOS image and uh, hopefully we'll use the nice DCV client to access the CentOS instance uh, and look at a virtual desktop interface on a on a uh, an instance um, here at uh, in Amazon EC2. So a little bit about the motivation. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with uh, uh, just a temporary desktop, right? You can make a lot of modifications. You can do some changes. Um, I can't see the chat right now just because I'm uh, I, I can only see my um, my slide presentation. But um, but I'm sure Neil has already thought of. Uh, 15 things he can do with uh, with a uh, temporary virtual desktop interface um, or just a workspace that's uh, easy to make, stand up, work on, and then um, uh, destroy. And you can get a lot of software pro uh, or you can get a lot of uh, hardware power this way, uh, which I think is a, really a great um, motivation, right? So. Uh, short bursts of amazing hardware that I would never be able to afford on my own. And there was some precedents here. Um, the team that's re that builds the uh, the software that I want to use for um, the virtual desktop is um, is owned by Amazon. They they were acquired, and they um, they've already done some work to to get this uh, to get this uh, out for you know, for other customers in different ways. And I thought, you know, this, this is a process that we can, um, we can recreate. Um, so the building blocks here are uh, the CentOS Stream 8 image um, and then the nice DCV application. Um, and the nice DCV application is free for use. It's, uh, um, I'll get into this later, but, um, uh, when it's used on an Amazon EC2 instance, it can be used on uh, in other locations, but there is uh, there is a charge for that. Um, uh, and uh, this is exiting, but I mean, I meant existing 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 options for the accelerated instance type. So this was something that I saw that we were already doing in ways on different operating systems. Um, for uh, for big beefy instance types with the GP GPU, and there's some complications obviously with um, with that and involve um, non free uh, software, and uh, that's what this slide is about. So we have uh, kind of a, a specific group of instance types that we'll look at, and in planning this, you kind of have to take that into account, right? So. There's a lot of different ways that you can do, um, you, or a lot of different sort of slices that you can have in the uh, in the world of virtual virtual instances, obviously. And uh, when you attach hardware to them, it makes them uh, uh, even that much more 
uh, useful in different kinds of ways. So um, looking at the types of instances that are available, I, th there, I made uh, came to the conclusion that there were definitely going to be a couple of different options here. One was going to be that for the x86 side, um, I would probably need to, to look at two images, right? Uh, one that was going to satisfy the requirements of just the general purpose instances or instances really that don't have accelerated hardware associated with them. And then there'd need to be one or many that fit the needs of specifically the, the other types of accelerated computing. So uh, there's FPGA, there's um, <laughs> these dynamically attached uh, um, chips that you can use, but you still have to have a, a, an out of tree driver for. Um, and, and then the, just the basic general purpose GPUs and purpose, purposeful um, GPUs for, uh, um, for graphics acceleration. So each one of those has, you know, a different kind of, of uh, card and different kinds of complications. Um, so focus my uh, considerations here around two kinds of instances. One is one that doesn't have any of this acceleration, and that's the one I've, I've built for today. And, and then the second one was uh, finding the instances that are easiest to apply um, configurations to, and that's right now that's the NVIDIA uh, controllers um, from the work that I was doing here. So P-series instances, G-series instances uh, that are x86 with NVIDIA were uh, the easiest ones to build for. Uh, the Easy2 Image Builder. Um, those of you who have been around a while know that um, I have uh, very much enjoyed working on projects around OS Build and uh, also uh, Kiwi and um, you know, from the from work on to done on the Fedora Cloud Sig, um, had some uh, limited experience with Image Factory, but um, but really uh, this was my my choice to use the EC2 Image Builder was based around some of the internal practices at Amazon, where the Image Builder is a part of the um, part of the expected um, workflow. So what I saw um, was that this is, this is used in, in many different cases in, in different ways. So um, there are a few ways of making the EC2 image builder uh, function and it works as a pipeline and it's very, very much a, it can either run on a standard cron job or it can be event driven or you can have it just run um, uh, in, you know, in, uh, when, when you decide to have it run. Uh, you can execute something, but event driven seemed like a, a really great way to do it. Most of the time, uh, when I was doing this, I just set up a, a like a monthly job because this is not I'm not trying to roll these all the time, but I'd still want to have uh, a decent configuration. So you make changes to the configuration. That configuration uh, has a relevant chain set change set, you update the uh, image builder configuration uh, so that it contains new documents. Those new documents are run by the simple services management agent, uh, which has to be installed during the config. And I'll show you that in the, in the um, configuration demonstration. And once the instance is built and the software configuration is satisfied, uh, an AMI is produced. Um, once that AMI is produced, the image builder will take your configuration and distribute that image across multiple regions. And uh, it'll also do partitions. Uh, I think I've got another slide where I'll talk about that a little bit more, but you can see that it distributes the machine image across. So an EC2 image builder is primarily a single pipeline. The pipeline has 
uh, an image recipe. And that image recipe is built up of scripts. And effectively, there are two types of scripts. There are build scripts and there are test scripts. Um, what, I, what I've found is that uh, a large number of, of uh, people who use the, um, the, uh, the EC2 image builder create uh, a build pipeline and then they also have a test pipeline and the test pipeline they'll go back through and uh, review all of the configuration so the build build pipeline will have just a simple uh, single single machine image created and once that single uh, machine image is created uh, you can start back over with the with a uh, with a test comp a, a, um, a test configuration. Um, image recipes build the machine image, and then they use the distribution configuration to, to assign permissions, to copy the images to more than one region, and then to copy it even to different partitions. And what I mean by partition is I mean you may have one account that is responsible for building the image, but then you may want to get it over to, you know, to a Chinese account. So you've got a, an account in China. You've got everything set up so that you can just move that image into a different account, that into that different partition, or into GovCloud if you have uh, requirements around that. And then you can share it to other uh, to other groups or other organizations so that they can use the images themselves. Um, that can be just public if you want to push them out for public, uh, or it can be um, extremely specific. So the image recipe, I remember I, I talked to you about the image recipe. The image recipe is the is sort of the primary uh, pipeline um, configuration. And um, after I've described the slide, I'll, I'll uh, uh, stop for and check the questions. The, uh, the SSM agent is, a, is a, a configuration tool that is used and on Linux, it's used for one reason, which is to run the documents uh, that are created for uh, the configuration. So the image recipe has components. The components themselves have um, have a uh, have a specific script in them. That script in each one of the individual components is run using the run document command. Uh, through the utility, the, the image builder utility. And the agent RPM has to be there before it can do that. Um, this is a cloud init script, the YAML for a cloud init script, a cloud config, in fact, that installs the Python 3 library and then installs the, uh, um, the latest RPM for the Amazon SSM agent and then starts it. So a little bit more about BCV. Um, BCV has been around for uh, several years now and the it's freely available to use on EC2 instances. Um, it's free as in freedom. It's not free as in beer. So uh, when you use it on Amazon uh, EC2, it, oh, I'm sorry, it's not free as in freedom it's free as in beer um, when you use it on Amazon EC2. When you're not using it on the EC2 instances, it costs money. All right. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to, so yeah, who doesn't want to drop Neil's name, right? He's everywhere. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the, uh, let's do the demo. All right. So here's the pipeline. Uh, is this visible? Can you see this or is this too small? Okay. I'm going to pretend like it's too small. All right. 
So here's uh, okay. That's looks like an expired session. Just one second. Looks like my session expired. Let me unshare my screen for a second and start that back up. All right, back. Great. Okay, this should be, is this big enough? Uh, Rich, you said it's pretty small. Is it still pretty small with even with the larger type? All right. So, Here's the image pipeline. Let's see, it might have to be a little smaller. So we have uh, one pipeline, and that's the CentOS 8 stream pipeline. And inside here, you'll see there's the image recipe. The image recipe has the uh, the cloud config that I showed you to install the SSM agent. It has a directive to remove the SSM agent. This is just my personal preference to, to remove the SSM agent after the build is completed. And then it maintains the same configuration uh, that I have or that you would have on uh, any standard sent to a stream image. The image uh, recipe is built on components. And a component file is a YAML file that uh, has a, um, a series of instructions. The component has, in, in the case of a build component, it has phases uh, called build or validate. <clears throat> and then there are some instructions. Uh, once you have these, once you've, you've written down these instructions, so these instructions come from just reading the documentation for nice DCB. Um, if you, uh, Um, look at the setup instructions for installing the server. You would see that they are um, pretty simple. It's very straightforward. And that in the image builder configuration, uh, they are uh, once again uh, provided. So just the same way that those those uh, instructions are set up in the installer configuration, they're set right up in the image builder uh, build session. So you can think of it a little bit like a make file. <clears throat> and it has some uh, some limited ability to have uh, variables. And those are used uh, for for various things. Let's see. So my recipe gets me uh, an image, and that image is created based on, or the instance that creates that image is 
is built on uh, this con the uh, infrastructure configuration. The infrastructure configuration has a blueprint for the image or the instances that are created for the build. As you can see here, there's just one that's created. Uh, any notification areas that you need to, if you, if you need to cut to kick off another um, another job based upon the infrastructure uh, configuration, so that you can make sure that you have all this all the um, components together. This is how you would do it. Um, <clears throat> And that basically uh, sets up the environment in which your your configurations is, or your uh, install is done. And then there's uh, very importantly this instance setting. So if you're doing troubleshooting, if your configuration is not yet set in stone, you want to make sure that you have a a key pair and you've you're making sure to not terminate your instances on failure. Uh, sometimes. It's, uh, oh, and then log files, obviously you can have uh, a log bucket uh, that you can throw all of the detail from the config, from the build into, and then you can have that to review. Um, okay. So we have uh, beyond that, a um, in our pipeline, a distribution configuration so the settings for the distribution tell you where tell you where to send the images and who to share them with um, the army sharing uh, pretty basic right so you can you can share completely to the public um, or you can share to a different to a new to a um, to an additional account so let's go and look at the build pipeline and see where we are in the, the image building. Looks like there's an image available. So let's go create an instance. So in this case, we have our own instances, and you can see that it's got a the name of the uh, the instance has the the build time in it. <clears throat> that is a requirement. I'm just going to start a machine that I think is going to run quickly. Okay. Make sure it's got an IP address we can reach. Should have a default uh, configuration. This might not work for me uh, out of the gates because it doesn't have any rules, but we'll add a rule while it's launching. It's a brand new account. I set up the account for the uh, um, for the demo. All right. Now we have an instance running. filters. Oh, and this will show you that we have a 
I'm gonna back out just a little bit. You can see that there's there are instances here that are associated with the build. So if something goes wrong, there's an there's an artifact there that you can start, um, or will be left running in the case of uh, of a failure, right? So these were terminated because the jobs were completed, and then this one is stopped uh, because something apparently went wrong. Okay, but now we're looking at this one. You have an address, but maybe I can connect to it. Um, no, I can't connect to this way. Like link that. Ah. not have a did my key not go in Hmm. All right, well, let's see. Okay, it's in. Launch another one uh, with the. Sorry, this is uh, my mistake, apparently. But um, I have a workaround, which is to add my own. Um, scripts okay
This time I don't need the key pair because I'm adding them all in my user script, my user data. Check and see if I can get to this one again. Hmm. All right. Let me go back to the presentation while that's while it's going and we can we can finish that up. Okay. So I do have this GitHub repository and I'll make these slides available uh, obviously afterwards, um, which shows the whole uh, configuration and uh, the process for for um, uploading and updating those uh, scripts that I've used. And uh, for those of you who are um, uh, Emacs fanatics, this is all uh, tangled out of one uh, org file uh, for, the, for the configuration. So the distribution settings are here. You can see how the profiles are, are worked, um, how this works for uh, CentOS 7, and then how it works for 8. Um, not much difference in the distribution setting. Um, the installer itself, the component, uh, that component uh, obviously is different for 7 and 8 because uh, one is set up for um, Wayland, the other is not. And <clears throat> the recipes are here. And this just makes it easy to, um, to manipulate a lot of this, this uh, um, outside of the, the standard process. And here you can see the versioning configuration and the, um, the way that I've uploaded the, these uh, components to S3 as, an, as a staging area for uh, creating the components. Uh, and then the image, then creating the image recipes that use those components. So all of that is available um, for you. And with that, I'll take any questions that anyone has. I'm going to move back and stop sharing my screen for a second. So if anyone has any questions, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A tab. And if not, thank you very much, David, for this presentation. Great. Yeah, sorry, that uh, little snafu there at the end of the demonstration. But live demos everyone... are always fun, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> it's always fun. But uh, uh, happy to do this for, for anyone one-on-one -on -one, or if anyone wants to um, make any, create any issues in, the, in the, um, the GitHub repository, we can keep talking about this and making it better. You do, in fact, have two questions. Oh, fantastic. Um, so I'm going to answer Martin's question first. Um, any particular advantage of the NICE over the uh, Citrus VDI? I don't know. 
Um, what I do know is that I was that the Citrix VDI was not available to me for free, and uh, the and the um, uh, yeah no Wayland is not yet supported. That's uh, that's a that's a part of that. Um, Neil uh, asked about when Nice DCV would be open sourced. Uh, so free is in freedom. Obviously, it would be better than free is in beer even. Um, and uh, would love to to do that. Let's keep talking about it and uh, continue to keep that as a hot topic and hot request for the for the uh, nice DCV team here at Amazon. Well, thank you again for the presentation and thank you all for attending and for your questions. Please do join us again tomorrow, starting again at 1500 UTC. And we have five more presentations tomorrow. So we look forward to seeing you all then. And uh, all of the videos from today should be on YouTube before I leave my desk this evening. So uh, thank you all again. <laughs>